All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to From CNC to VCP, A Journey of Professional Growth. Uh, let's get this out of the way. It's the VMworld disclaimer. I'm sure we've all seen this 100 times at this point, but it's up there. Uh, a little bit about me. I am Paul Woodward, Jr. I'm a data center engineer from Presidio. Um, I'm a 2017 V expert. You can find me on Twitter at ExploreVM. You can find me at uh, ExploreVM.com, as well as the ExploreVM podcast, uh, available where most podcasts can be found. Uh, a couple other things about me really quick. I took uh, third place in last season's, not this year, previous year's Virtual Design Master, which is a online design competition. I'm going to be a delegate in the upcoming Tech Field Day in September. And uh, let's see, what else do I have on there? Oh yeah, I've spoken at eight VMUG meetings across uh, three states, four states now, including uh, VMworld. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about that guy in the green shirt. That was me, uh, much, much slimmer, uh, six years ago, working at an envelope factory in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was a little surprised to find out that envelopes are still made here in America and not shipped in from overseas like most things. Uh, but I found out that, wow, I actually lost my place. It didn't take long. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> so working at the envelope factory, I was like, okay, I found myself a good paying job right out of high school. I didn't go and pursue my degree right away. So when the opportunity to make a whopping $12 an hour presented itself to a 19 year old, I jumped all over it. But after a couple of years of sitting at a machine, pressing the same button, lifting, twisting, bending, all the menial, monotonal uh, factory work, coupled with minimal raises every year, that really took a toll on, its, on myself and my family. So at that time, my wife said, you know what, maybe you should go back to school. Let's, you know, find something else. Let's have you come up with a new career. So at that point, I'm like, okay, well, I talked to people I knew who were in IT. I talked to the IT manager at work. And I talked to all my friends who were in IT. And they said an associate's degree is a great place to start. So, okay, perfect. Um, I've got, let's, there, there's my starting point. Let's go ahead and go with the associate's degree. So being the, the analytical person that I am, I said, all right, let's look and research the schools. Where I was living is between two different technical college systems. And the, the, the fact that I spent that time and really researched where I was going to go ended up paying off dividends in the end because the college I chose really helped form who I became. So all right, cool. We got the college. We got the degree program. At that point, I sat down with my wife and we started looking at all the, the coursework and we didn't have kids. My job was set from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, so I had a very set work schedule. So trying to make up for the time that I lost by not starting uh, college right away out of high school, I said, you know what, I'm really gonna hammer down on these, course, these courses. And I ended up signing up for four nights worth of classes. So I was working 40 hours a week plus 12 hours of school. I mean, that should be easy, right? It sounds easy. The problem with that was after the first month when the excitement of learning something new and like, oh, this is gonna be great, I'm gonna change my life, when that wore off, it really started to catch up. And I also had set the bar really high for myself at that, uh, at that time. Since I kind of slacked off in high school, I said nothing but A's is gonna really fly for me in college, especially I'm paying for this, I want it to be worth my time. And I also wanted to transfer to a four-year school after the associate's degree program. So again, having the good grades. So at that point, I had to kind of take a step back. I realized I had bitten off way more than I could chew. And that is a feeling to this day that I'm glad I can recognize and acknowledge and do something about. Uh, if you, to me, if you've got if you, the ability to admit that you've got more on your plate than you can handle or to actually like decline taking extra work on, I, I don't see that as unprofessional or unreliable. I see that as being dedicated to what you've already got going on, as well as you care about the quality of work you put into what you're currently working on. So I set the standard, I am gonna finish these classes, it's halfway through the semester. So I decided it's time to really get down into micromanaging and really plotting out everything for the rest of the semester. And show of hands, who here loves being micromanaged? Exactly, no hands went up. So I went into it a little bit hesitant, but first thing I did 
was being the, the future IT professional, I took a whiteboard and I threw it in my living room. And I had to go into my living room because I was in a one bedroom apartment at the time. So I took this, this whiteboard and I made a big calendar grid. And on that calendar, I put all of the deadlines for projects and homework and exams and everything for all of the courses that I took. So that way I could see, I've got all this stuff coming up, this is due, and where it related to other courses so I can manage my time around that. And then I'd also keep notes on the big projects and the big exams uh, with percentages. So if it's, you know, I, I spent, I got 25% of this done, I'm at 38%, just, you know, arbitrary numbers, but it, you know, it means something to you. And when I did that, it was able, I could see, okay, well, this, this project is due in two weeks and I'm only at 40%. I need to spend more time on that. I'm pretty far ahead on this other one. It's not due for a while. I was able to shift my, you know, my focus. And this is actually a tactic that I still use to this day in some of my larger IT projects. So I've got my grid, I've got everything laid out. I've got the whole percentage system. All right, so we're moving forward and we complete that first semester. We spend all of this time and we power through. And at the end of that semester, how do we think I did? I ended up straight A's on those four courses, which was amazing. Um, that first semester is where I started getting some of these gray hairs. And so learning from my previous failure, or not failure, but mistakes or biting off more than I could chew in that first semester, I lowered my course load to two classes for the next semester. And frankly, that made life a lot more manageable. It's allowed time for the family, time for myself, and I, could, I feel like I was learning a little bit better. All right, so after that first semester, something happened. I, had a, I got really lucky in the fact that while I was going to school, I had two, I happened upon not one, but two mentors during my time in, this in these courses. The first was a buddy, or a, well, he became a buddy in my CCNA course. He spent many, many years in IT, and he could see that I was very new to all of this. So as I was going through the classes, we'd work on labs together, we'd prepare for exams together, and he would actually spend the time to go deeper into topics than the professor. And we'd go into the labs, we'd power through the labs, and he'd go, okay, and he'd change something. You're like, what did I change? Make me figure it out. So with that, it was amazing. It was a lot more experience and knowledge, and he helped me succeed a lot better than I would have without it. Um, another mentor was my English professor from that first semester. In high school, in elementary school, middle school, I was a great writer. I, you know, get little awards, whatever, for how I wrote, whatever, you know, my stories, whatever. It was something I, I did pretty well. So I was like, all right, I'm taking a nice, like, pretty high level college English class here. Turn in my first paper and get it back, excited to see what I got. And I look down at it and on the top, there's an H. I'm like, an H, that's two letters below F. How bad did I do on this exam or this, this paper? So as he's passing out all the papers, the professor says, all right, if you've got an H on your paper, I wanna see you after class. So instantly my heart sank. And we finished up class and I sat there reluctantly in my chair, watching everybody but two other students leave the room. And he goes, all right, everybody, I bet you're wondering what an H means. And we, you know, we, we nod cautiously. And he said, an H, or he said, your papers all stood out leaps and bounds above everybody else. I want to nominate you for the honors program. Which was a huge relief figuring out, okay, I didn't fail this paper. And I honestly, I probably should have been pulled over on my way home because I was speeding down the interstate. I was super excited because not only did I think I could actually pull all this off, but now I had some, some vindication. I, I was being shown, yes, you're doing great. Keep this up. So from that day on, that professor and I, we spent a lot of time chatting either before or after class, and he pointed out that my writing style would be perfect for like a technical writing career. And he also helped me learn how to craft things in a way to be able to communicate to people across all business spectrums. And I think we're all pretty aware that being able to communicate strongly, confidently, and be able to relay your message to any people at varying education levels, varying professional levels, that's a very important skill to have. I mean, here I am speaking to a room full of professional, tech, uh, professional technical people. So 
After all of that, I finally graduated. Here I am, graduation day. Took me a lot longer than I would like, like it to have to get to this point. A lot of things happen when you're working this much and trying to go to school at the same time. In, in my case, um, I bought a house. My, my wife and I, we divorced. My father passed away and my job went from 40 hours to 60 hours in mandatory overtime. So I had to learn to shift and move around life, move around school and it's you got to take the hits and keep rolling if you've got your if you've got your target if you've got your goal figure out how to keep moving along with that so we've got the we've got the degree awesome it's time to get that job right i must have applied for 50 positions in that first month outside of or in the first few weeks outside of uh, graduation and i think i got two or three interviews Turns out, having no experience in the field you want to get into isn't really the best way to find a new job. You know, Bill Lumberg here, entry level with five years experience. How many of us have seen that posting? Or it's, you need seven years experience on a technology that's only a couple years old. So what did I do? How did I finally get that leap? Or how did I finally get my foot into the door in that, that company that I, you know, provided me and my opportunities? And as much as I don't like to admit this, Sometimes it's not what you know, but it's who you know. And I did a lot of networking with recruiters, with professionals, as much as I could get out there and talk and chat. So, and let's see if I can remember this properly. My, my break came from my close friend's sister's husband's friend, who was a recruiter. And we had seen each other in passing at events or you know, family gatherings, parties, whatever, chatted. And so he knew what I was looking to get into and I knew he'd be a great resource for me in the future. So he, he got me an interview, and I go in and I interview, multinational company, huge company, great place to learn, to grow, it's gonna be cool, and I get the job offer. This company's willing to take a chance on this kid, right out of college, slide over the offer letter, I talk to the recruiter, all right, you know, it's coming to your email, awesome, I look at it. It's a three month contract, It's what I got offered, with a very strong possibility to be extended to six months. So what do you do? What, 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 I do? what do I do? At this point, I had nine years in at this company that I was at, the, the, the factory. So I give up nine years of union seniority, nine years fully invested in the 401k, steady pay, benefits, for what? A three month contract that could be thrown out at any moment. Times like that, you've really got to assess your risk reward threshold. For me, this is the field I want to get into. I've spent all this time and all the blood, sweat, and tears to be able to present myself and take this chance. But, and conversely, what if I fail? What if I accept this job and I fail so horribly, I lose my income, I could lose my house. I weighed the pros and the cons and I thought about it for a good long time. And I think one of the things that really, really kind of helped me make that choice to move forward was the VP of the company said, that I was at was said, you know, if you want to come back, if things don't work out, you're more than welcome. We'll always have a spot for you here, which that's all well and good to say, but in practice, who knows if that actually was going to be true. So I took my risk and then I, I took the three month contract and I started my career as a identity and access management technician. It's a super fancy word for password resets and account creation. All right, cool. So now I'm finally doing this job and I'm training and I can see very quickly that I'm not gonna grow a lot in this position. It's corporate, it's very siloed and opportunities to move up and move out within this position, it's probably not gonna happen. But what I did do in that time frame was really try to work hard to set myself apart from the other people that were brought in for this particular project on a similar contract and show them that I wanted to be a full-time employee. I wanted to do a lot more. And so I was like, okay, what, 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 what else can I learn outside of like my little bucket of skills you want me to do? How can I help? What's that guy doing? He's got a lot, let me help with him. And that persistence and all that hard work paid off because two months into that three month contract, the three other people that I was brought in with were, uh, they, they had their contracts terminated but they kept me around because I, was be I had become a valuable uh, resource to the team. Cool. 
Awesome, that's wiped a little bit of sweat. So, like I said, in this position, I, I wasn't really gonna be able to grow the way I you know, wanted to. So what I started to do was I kept, uh, I stayed active in, I, in IT communities, specifically VMUG. One of the last classes I took in my degree program was Emerging Technologies, which was the, the college's uh, VCP training course. And that turned out to be very fortunate for me. Virtualization was a technology that I, I, I clicked with really well. I really enjoyed it. I understood it. I was excited, but still I'm excited by it. And what did I do? I sat there reading everything I could, blogs, books, articles, whatever, about ESX and about Hyper-V, and I just filled my head with as much knowledge as I could. And on top of that, I, I, then, I then said, okay, I'm learning all this stuff, but how do I keep going? At that point, I built a brand. I'm like, I'm gonna be out here, I need to do this stuff, I need to express myself outside of the work environment. So I started, I got a, I, I created a name, Explore VM. And with that, I went out and I purchased a domain, got the Twitter account, I got you know, my LinkedIn polished up, and something else was I also created a professional Facebook account. And I locked down my personal one so you can't really find it, because let's be real, how many of us have pictures or stuff on your, your, your Facebook that you don't want your boss or potential employers to see? So I started building that brand. A little early, I forgot which slide was next. <laughs> Started building that brand. And it wasn't just the obvious stuff. Um, I locked down many other smaller accounts as well. Any kind of social media platform you can think of, lock it down with your name, it prevents other people from using your name in a way you wouldn't want it to be, or your brand in a way you wouldn't want it to be. And also, it makes you more searchable. So I've got my brand, and I've been going to these VMUG meetings for years, so I decided I need to give back. 2015, I took that leap and I got up on my first VMUG stage. And I was stuttering, I was sweating profusely, I was super nervous. But I got through that session and now, like I said, I'm at however many, through however many states, however many sessions. And I love getting up here and doing this. I love the audience interaction and it's, it's been great to give back. And it's also rewarding to hear people come up and say, you know, well, thank you, what you talked about, I'm gonna try this. I had it happen yesterday with my V Brown Bag session yesterday. You know, thank you for talking about that particular tool. I'm gonna look into this, we need to get this in my environment. So you get instant feedback, it's, it can be gratifying. But it also helps build that brand. So programs like the VExpert program or the Nutanix Technology Champions program that recognize your involvement in the community. I've been accepted in both of those, and that's allowed me to help grow my brand. The fact that I'm here speaking has actually a lot to do with the VExpert program. So we've got, we're out speaking, we've got our brand. I started blogging as well. I started just whatever topics I learned about at VMUG, whatever I was doing in the home lab, whatever I was doing at work, get out there and blog, share your knowledge. And then, Oh, that's, that's where that next slide comes into play. One other little piece, I go back in, going back to those obscure uh, social media platforms, lock everything down. And the one I'm gonna call out that people seem to forget about is Google Plus. Yes, Google Plus is dead, but you wanna have your brand into Google because Google gives priority to Google generated content. So that's what we've got here. This was a screenshot of searching Explore VM. Here we can see that ExploreVM.com is the first, uh, and my Twitter is second, and then what's the third? It's my, it's my podcast being shared over Google+. So it keeps you in the top of, the, the top of that first Google search page. So when employ, potential employers are looking for you, you can be found. So, okay, we talked about all these different social media platforms, all these things to do. Do you have a real world example of how this can be applied? Sure. So I started that that uh, identity access management position, and six months in or so, we all got herded into a meeting room. Hey, just so everyone knows, we're gonna get rid of our North American IT department. You've got three months to find a new job. Went out, I found a new job. I started working at an MSP, and I spent a couple years there, and financially, the company hit some hard times, made some choices to lay off a big chunk of the workforce, so I found myself out in the world looking for a new job. 
first thing I did is I jumped on my social media platforms and I threw out this tweet. Hitting the job market again, looking for something. You know, let that sit out there, let the world see that. Um, I also had phone calls to the re recruiters that I'd been working with just passively throughout the years. Uh, as I was leaving the parking lot for my then, you know, former employer, I had interviews set up for that Monday. It was a Friday, they did the layoffs. I had interviews already for Monday. So keeping those relationships going is huge if you're trying to, you know, find your next step. So I sent out this tweet. This was the Monday after I was laid off. Within five minutes or so, I get a direct message from one of my followers that I actually interviewed for my blog years ago before I even got into the field of IT. And he said, hey, you know, uh, we're looking for a data center engineer. I've been following you for a while. Like, I read your stuff. You know, I think you'd be a good fit for us. Would you like to interview? I'm like, of course. Like, you know, who doesn't like getting paid? Yeah, like, like, I'll do that. And honestly, I interviewed with the company. And I took, you know, I was offered the position. And I took it. And frankly, I'm rather glad that I did. And within one month to the day of being let go, I had my position. I had, I had, I had a job again. And that company has actually paid off or taking a position with that company has actually proven to be really valuable. It was giving me great opportunities to grow uh, professionally, my skills, it allows me to do stuff like this and be able to come to VMworld and speak with everybody. But does that mean I've, I've stopped? I've got a great job. No, of course it doesn't mean I've stopped. This year, you know, I saw the podcast, I started podcasting. I've got my equipment here with me if anyone wants to chat on the podcast later on. I see a few guests in the, uh, the audience here from previous episodes. I've started getting myself out there more. I've got, I made swag. Who doesn't love swag? I've got stickers. I've got pins. I'm doing everything, you know, I've seen others do to help try and promote my brand. So it's always try to continue to grow. And another thing I keep doing, and you, some of your employers might not agree with this, some of them do, is I, I, I pursue a lot of certifications. Even if you don't need that paper for your job, studying for and taking certifications is a great way to actually learn about new technologies. Um, here are some study, uh, study tips that I have found useful. I presented these in a, uh, a VMUG meeting about preparing for the VCP as well. Um, you know, read, optimize your time that you've spent elsewhere. I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm commuting, uh, podcasts during the, sh you know, when I'm showering. So anytime you can find, to cram a little bit extra in there. Um, I scheduled the exam for Monday. I just passed the VCP 6 Delta two Mondays ago, Monday morning. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, you know, not everything, not everything works. And this goes back to your ability to also, don't be afraid to fail. Very first time I took the VCP, I failed it. Passed it the second time and I've been renewing ever since. But you know, don't let that little stumbling point trip you up. Another thing, another technique that I've used uh, is the Pomodoro technique. Anybody here heard of the Pomodoro technique? One, okay. Um, it's a method to allow your brain to actually focus in short bursts. Say for 25 minutes you focus, you turn off your phone, you turn off your email, and you study, you read, you go over your documents, whatever. Focus hard down on that for 25 minutes, take a small break, get a five minute break, get water, you know, answer an email, whatever, and then do this again, 25 minutes, five minutes off. Then after a couple of 25 minute sessions, take a longer break. I actually learned about this technique through uh, Rubrics Chris Wall when he was presenting at a VMUG several years ago. So that whole being involved in the community thing comes back again. Um, I use this heavily in preparation for that VCP, and I'll be using this again in the upcoming certifications I'm taking uh, in the next few weeks. There it goes. Okay, so one other thing I'd like to toss in here. As you grow, and as you grow your career and you grow professionally, people are gonna look to you to be a leader or to be a mentor, and you might get a, an actual management position, or you might be like an unofficial leader, like a thought leader within your company. Uh, I asked my boss, what does it take to become a senior engineer? And he said, it's, I'm not gonna tell you this list of certifications and X number of years experience. It's, I want people, your coworkers, to be comfortable to come to you and ask questions, and you give them advice, and you help them, and you help them learn. You help them grow. And yes, there's a, like a couple of small things, other things, but be a thought leader, and that's, that's how you can contribute. So as you're doing that, you've also got to walk this fine line. 
we've all worked with IT, you know, coworkers who are they're they're not so great. They're arrogant. They are full of themselves. They know more than you. So as you become a thought leader or if you get a promotion, be a compassionate leader. Be a compassionate coworker. Take charge when you need to, but also be very willing to step back and let another coworker lead. Help them. Do it with a smile. We're we're all in it for the same thing. We're all here to help the company succeed. Um, mentor if you can, and point somebody into the direction, you know, in the directions that they need to go to help them grow. So take things that you've learned from your sessions here at VMworld this week. Take it back to the office and share it. Share it out with everybody. So I want to thank you all for your time. Uh, resources mentioned, you can find them all on Explore VM from a, you know, the dig through a couple months back it's in the blog posts. Um, and we can take questions offline. I was given the one minute to go. So once again, thank you. I hope you found this uh, useful. And if you have questions,